of the feminist group, of the feminist movement, New York, of course. Um, sorry, New Yorkers. Um, but yeah, a radical faction of the feminist movement took over and made it anti-men. And how she was even pleading, this woman who was one of the co-founders of the League of Women Voters, right? Um, she was even saying, like, no, we need to bring it back to what it was. And, and I always want to encourage conservative women because it was like, oh, conservative feminism is not a thing. Oh, okay. What about Susan B. Anthony, who was a pro-life? Or the people who were actually pro-gun, like Wyoming. Wyoming was the first state to allow women to, um, to vote and hold public office. You think Wyoming ever was a progressive state? No. It was a pro-gun state, still a pro-gun state. Um, so those values that we have as pro-gun women, as pro-life women, are what the original feminist movement was about, and they had the leaders who were pushing that. We had Christian women who were pushing, I mean, I don't say prohibition was the best thing, but they pushed the prohibition movement. That was part of the feminist movement. Um, so we have to go back and educate where are the original feminist movement actually began, where the women's suffrage movement, where the women's empowerment movement started, and educate people now who think that that radical faction is representative of the feminist movement. It's not. It's a lie. spray <laughs> uh, to ask them if you know the best thing for them is always going to be the firearm of course again it is your right to choose if you feel comfortable with the firearm and want to use it uh, completely two different things too um, I'm a I'm a NRA certified firearms instructor and uh, <laughs> so and I teach women actually on in Colorado you can teach women, um, or teach men too, but I, I teach women, um, particularly to get their concealed carry permits. Um, it's actually quite easy there. Um, and, and the biggest thing is they always ask me a question, and at the end of the day, do you think your attacker is trying to figure out what the least amount of force they can use in order to, to, to use against you? No, they're going to use, the, in that sense, they're smart, right? Um, and so why would I encourage you, right, if you're comfortable with using that, to go with any um, amount of force that's less than what's typically used um, with a criminal, so. Um, yeah, and with that pepper spray, uh, my, I kind of can't have pepper spray like accidentally go off. It is not pleasant, <laughs> and it, the effects are wide reaching. So if I'm gonna spray my attacker with pepper spray, I'm probably gonna succumb to that. Especially here in Reno where it, it's a little windy at times and, and the wind comes from multiple directions. Uh, so there's that. You, you better make sure that your pepper spray is uh, not expired. That can be really bad if you're trying to spray someone with pepper spray and there's no effects. They're gonna be pretty ticked off too. Um, and then with, I also think about it's so funny, my dad, I don't know why I always get this image in my head, but so my dad was getting ready to go on a, a big hunt and he knew that he would be potentially encountering bears. And my parents have a property up in um, Great Eagle, so he was asking some of the neighbors, like, hey, what's, what's some good like self-defense I can have against a bear? Um, I heard that this, like, you know, bear repellent is really good, and my neighbor said, yeah, I heard that too. I sprayed it on my trash cans to keep them from getting into my trash, and the next morning I went out there, and the bear was holding the lid and licking off the repellent. <laughs> like, it was just a nice seasoning, and so I just think that opposition needs to be met with equal force. Yeah. And, um, is concerned, you have to let your attacker get a whole lot closer than I'm comfortable with to be able to effectively use a taser. You better make sure they don't have a really thick sweater on because it may not reach through all the layers that you're wearing. Um, and so I just, I don't know that it's it's really all that effective. Yeah. I was in Iowa hunting last year and they were just like, 
Yeah, a taser during the winter season. That's cool. That's cute. Uh, that's not going to do anything. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think I saw a hand go up back there. No? Oh, okay. All right. Yes, sir. Like shootouts over oh, well, campus yes. over discussion yeah, and yeah, you get shot. Uh, there's so many. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of them, but and I just think it's it's really interesting too because they bring up all of these scenarios that could happen, and I sit there and think like. I understand that that may be in their reality and their lens of how they're looking through everything. That is their reality. That is a legitimate fear that they have. And I always ask them, what's going to stop that from happening now? Yeah. What's going to stop a student now from coming on to, into your office hours if they're really upset about a grade you gave them and shooting you? I don't understand. I and I get I get told I don't understand that question. Okay. Um, what's going to stop somebody from coming into your classroom now, or a student getting really agitated and potentially opening fire if they choose to carry a gun on campus? And I get a blank stare. Um, and so I think it it is just so no, I, none of that stuff has happened. But you bring up a really good point of how we need to have those discussions with people and understand that that's where they are. And for them, it is a real legitimate concern. And they are terrified of that happening. But opening up the door of, OK, so let's talk about that. What about this? What about that? Absolutely. And they use the same thing in Texas. So in Texas, they use all of those arguments. They use, well, drunk students are going to use it, and they're going to have, you know, their firearms on them. They're like, yeah, because they're not drunk, concealed carry permit holders outside of campus who also have their firearms and yet, you know, obey the law, right? Um, they do it all the time. Uh, with the defense, I wanted to bring up some statistics on that. Uh, so the CDC did a survey in uh, 2013. Um, and they actually found that up from um, 500,000 to 3 million people a year use firearms in self-defense. CEC, okay? So when people are like, oh yeah, you're gonna use all these NRA statistics, like, yeah, actually not. It was actually Obama who <laughs> pushed that and also it was the CDC. So um, things like that and then also the fact that the ones before Texas, they use it a lot, oh, what's gonna happen if they have firearms on campus or gonna, they're going to use it against other people, especially men, and blah, blah, blah. Like, well, the actual instances that actually happened on campus were all negligent discharges. They were people showing their, fire, their brandishing their firearm or doing something that they were not supposed to be doing anyways. And most of the time, it, it was actually affecting them. Maybe one other person, but it affected them the most. But no other, um, no other shootouts, no other using the firearm who's a legally um, concealed carry permit holder uh, against another student, nothing like that. You know what this happens. Absolutely. Absolutely.
would be just to get rid of the culture that has that situation in the game. So instead of like having a firearm in time of rape, what preventative measures could you put in like keeping private like on, like on campus and a kind of like a culture around the area to prevent that rape from ever kind of coming? I think we've been trying to do that for several years and how's that working? Um, I just don't understand why they have to be mutually exclusive. Why can't we do both? And I think also, unfortunately, a lot of those people, I mean, that's why I said that I changed my views after I became a Born and Guide Christian, is because when you realize that it is human nature, that we're sinners, and we're gonna, yeah, regardless absolutely. of the culture, we're, and regardless of the yeah. laws, people are going to continue to sin, then that is why we have to defend the yeah. people who are going to protect themselves and protect other people. Yeah, we live in a broken, fallen world. So right. There's always going to, unfortunately, be people that are <coughs> bent on doing evil. Thank you guys.